Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Monday, August 8th meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. Uh, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. We have several announcements. Arthur? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mary Ann Smith, the town clerk. Uh, says that August 19, 2016 is the last day to register to vote for the September 8, 2016, which is a Thursday rather than a Tuesday, uh, state primary election. The town clerk's office will be open until 8 p.m. at night for the purposes only of uh, registering for the uh, state primary election. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact the town clerk's office at 781-709-1403. Thank you, Arthur. Bill? With an announcement? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Eagle Court of Honor um, is meeting for Eric Frisbee, uh, Boy Scout Troop 105, on Sunday, August 28th at 3 p.m. at the Herring Run on Marcus Street in Dumbo. There will be a reception immediately following. Any information that you need to it, call 781-706. Two five three zero by August nineteenth. Thank you, Bill. Dan. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we have a message from the town landing committee. There will be a town landing luau. Everyone is invited for this free event. The date is Saturday, August thirteenth, with rain date of Sunday, the fourteenth. Time is from eleven to two. Uh, they will have a special guest, Blossom the Clown, appearing from twelve to two, and she will be making balloon animals. And what to expect? Treasure Mountain Day contact. Contests, races, big and little island swim races, water races, donut eating contests, water and balloon toss. Stick around for the finale, the water balloon fight for ages above eight years old. Uh, Pembroke American Legion will provide a lunch free for everyone. Again, that's August 13th for the Town Landing Luau. Thank you, Dan. I have an announcement from uh, Boy Scout Troop 43. They are announcing that Nicholas Morrison has earned the Eagle Scout rank from the Boy Scouts of America, and uh, there will be a celebration and a ceremony on Friday, August 19th, starting at 6.30 p.m. at the Bryantville Meeting House, 32 School Street, Pembroke. Uh, two Eagle Scout announcements in the same evening. Again, Pembroke uh, really has a monopoly mm -hmm. on Eagle Scouts. It's, uh, a wonderful thing to see. Thank you. A um, couple other things I'd just like to bring to the attention of the public uh, concerning a couple of our selectmen, if I can. I hope I, I don't embarrass them with this. Uh, selectman Bolta uh, visited the Bryant Hill Food Bank, and they have a definite problem there for our additional storage space. Bill volunteered his time and his efforts uh, he uh, took out some old equipment and uh, he got it disposed of, gave them the storage. So another example of uh, Bill again helping Pembroke. And I'd like to give an attaboy to Selectman Boyle, who wrote an excellent article in our local newspaper about Tiny Brown, who recently passed away. Tiny and his son Peter own and operate an auto glass business, and Tiny was well known and generously supported many charities and organizations in town, and he will be missed by many. Thank you, Arthur. That was a great You're honor. welcome. Thank you. It was a pleasure to do it. Sure. Very good, Dad. Yeah. Uh, when it would be uh, Sunday, they had the Pembroke Fun Day that was put on by the uh, Pembroke Watershed Association. Um, and their purpose of having this is to bring attention to uh, cleaning the ponds and the streams and all that. And uh, 
It was quite a quite a day. The police, fire, state police, and all that were all there. Uh, it was uh, quite a nice day for the kids. They had a lot of fun. All well, my grandchildren uh, really enjoyed uh, the day up there. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention was that uh, we have a uh, world champion uh, boxing for women. Um, it was, uh, took place last week down in Plymouth, and uh, Alexander Lopez, who is the secretary treasurer of the Boys Club, uh, won a world title at, uh, at Plymouth uh, with a fight down there, and uh, she is now the uh, uh, world lightweight champion of the world. So it's a, it's a pretty good thing. And she donates her time at the Boys Club for the kids. So. Good. Anyone else have uh, an announcement? Just that uh, the Watershed Association was a big success. <coughs> Matthew was there as well, and um, you know, I chased my grandson around for three hours, and that was enough to put me away. But it was uh, it was well run, and um, you know, for a hot day, they uh, had a great success. I think. Good. I mean, What's going on? Yes, Matthew. So. Uh, in addition to all these other great events Pembroke is having, on August 20th, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., there'll be Pembroke Day, put on by Pembroke Chamber of Commerce. It's going to be a great day for fun for the whole family. And that's going to be at the first Lieutenant Brian M. McPhillips Field. Excellent. We have a lot going on in town, and I uh, want to thank everyone for making those announcements. Uh, first scheduled meeting is with Kathleen Keegan. Kathleen, would you like to come up front, please? Hello, Pembroke Selectman and uh, Town Administrator. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, I'm the chairperson for the uh, Pembroke Salute Service, which is an event that we're going to be putting on. It's a, a small group of Pembroke citizens. But we just want to thank folks like you and the police and the teachers and the DPW, the firemen, everyone that serves our town. Uh, we just want to have a wonderful day to support you folks. Um, and it's going to start off October 15th um, this year, 2016. And um, from 12 to 3 on the town green, we're just going to have a lot of activities that promote all these folks that serve the town. And then it will culminate at around 7 o'clock at night with fireworks. Um, so we're really excited to have a huge fireworks display um, like we did back in 2012 when Pembroke turned 300 years old. So our, our group is working ferociously to try to make that happen. And um, I'm here to request a vote to um, pay for the fireworks. Am I saying that right? I would request the board vote to ex execute the contract for the fireworks for October 15th. And paying for it as well. Right, yeah, so when you write the check, that makes sure it doesn't bounce. Does anyone have any questions for Kathleen? I'd just like to say that we uh, have uh, discussed this previously, but we never voted or made a decision. I think we're ready to do that okay. tonight. Uh, we have. Uh, discovered that the uh, Pembroke 300 fund has uh, an amount of money left in it, and it was donated money, and um, it was for the residents of Pembroke. So uh, I believe that we think that it's appropriate to uh, pay for the fireworks from out of that fund. So um, I would... Uh, Please select when don't have any questions. Uh, is there a motion? I would move to uh, pay for the funds for the uh, 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 Fund Foundation to uh, pay for the fireworks. I believe the price is 15 out of it. I pay for it out of the money from the 300. And that, uh, that money was put uh, aside and kept the for a lot of people of Pembroke. Great event to get out there and to do that. It was, um, everybody can enjoy that. It's a free event um, for the town and uh, everybody can enjoy it. So it's, I think it's a uh, uh, long last time. Appreciate all your time and effort into, into doing this event for the people that come with also. Yeah, we love doing it. We have a motion by Bill. Is there a second? I second. Second by Matthew. Any other comments or questions from the board? 
Um, I'd just like to say for the public that uh, we have discussed this with the town accountant and uh, we cleared any questions that we had before and uh, so we're ready to vote on this now. All those in favor of Bill's motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I declare it five to zero. Thank you very much and uh, we'll, we'll have Ed go over the contract as he <laughs> always does and uh, he would execute that uh, once we uh, get a legal opinion on it. It's probably not going to be a problem, but that's uh, procedure. All right. Great. Now I'll keep you uh, apprised of as we continue to line everything up for that. Very good. That date, remember October 15th. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Have a great night. Thanks Thank again. You. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. On a side note to this, uh, and, and you know, I, I echo Bill's sentiment that uh, this money was donated <clears throat> by uh, various uh, people and community organizations uh, for the benefit of the town for, for fun events, which the 300th was, and this will be too. Uh, I'm just curious uh, what the balance is in the fund after this $15,000. It's a little in excess of 30000 Okay. And um, I, I think events like this that come up, it's, it's, a, it's a worthy expenditure. Uh, but you know, at, at some point, uh, this board or, or maybe the committee themselves uh, might want to uh, think ahead and uh, maybe create a program for expending the money. Or, or we could just keep it, uh, if something comes up, have it in our back pocket. Uh, but nothing to think of tonight. Uh, I just think the board should uh, consider it at some point. A good suggestion. And a, an answer to that, um, the town accountant and I are looking at preparing an article for the fall town meeting to do that very thing. Okay. Oh, great. Excellent. Thank you, Ed. Our next scheduled appointment is uh, at 8 o'clock with State Representative Josh Cutler, who will give us an update. Uh, but uh, we've got time between now and then, so we'll go down to the board action items. And the first item is for the board to vote a date for the special town meeting. October 18, 2016. Can I would move October 18, 2016 as the uh, for the town meeting. Okay. Uh, motion by Arthur and a second by Bill. Uh, any questions from the board? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, five to zero. The second uh, item under action items is to vote to reopen the special town meeting warrant effective August 15th, and to close the special town meeting warrant August 26th at 4 p.m. Do I have a motion? I would move the um, warrant to be opened effective August 15th and to close the special town meeting warrant as of August 26th at 4 p.m. Okay. Second uh, motion by Arthur, second by Bill. Any questions from the board? Question. Question, Dan. Ed, uh, do the department heads know and understand that tight window and any of the other folks in town that may have an article do or, or typically have an article do at special town meeting? Well, we will, uh, the department heads do, and I think, uh, I don't know if it was on the website. It was, and okay. individual departments are just going to sign the contract and notify the individual. All right, great. Because it's going to count with the minimum. Great. Yeah, and one, one of the things that that this board needs to always get better with is, is communication. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. everyone knows, especially in such a tight window. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you for that answer, Red. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please aye. say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, hearing none, that's five to zero. The next item is uh, review and accept the report of an informal meeting with the Division of Aeronautics held on June 24, 2016. Uh, on that date, um, I attended a meeting with uh, Selectman Volta, uh, Andrew Mahaley, who is the Mass DOT, Division of Aeronautics. He's an inspector. Uh, Police Chief Richard Wall and uh, Lieutenant David Kloss and was also attended by Sabrina, who took notes at this meeting. Uh, we met at 10 o'clock 
and we had uh, put together questions that we asked uh, the people that are abutters or interested citizens who had questions when uh, airplanes are uh, used at the private airfield on Baca Street. Uh, there was a lot of issues that they raised that this board uh, ha did not have the knowledge to answer those questions. So we contacted Andrew Mahaley, and uh, he came out to the meeting where we had put together all of the questions, and uh, we went over every question, and uh, we got answers from him. And uh, there was one question that uh, he gave us a partial answer, and he suggested that we uh, go to another area in Burlington, uh, the FAA. Uh, I spoke with a gentleman there who was the safety officer. Um, I sent him the question, and uh, he responded in writing and called me and gave me the answer, and we've included that in this report. We have a lot of questions from a lot of interested people, and uh, we put them all together in a report that uh, you have in front of you, and there's also some definitions in there of terms that uh, I at least am not that familiar with it. Um, I think we have answered every question, and what we would like to do is to uh, ask the board to vote to uh, put this together and forward it out to every person that asked the question. And uh, we would also, of course, include the owner of the private airfield uh, so that he knows exactly what we did, what the questions were, and what the answers were. So uh, what I would like to do, if the board agrees, is to keep this in a file so that in the future, uh, any other question that would come up for any new board of selectmen, uh, they would have a place to go as a reference. So right. do I have any questions from the board? Um, I just like to see it on the website also. There's probably some interested people that um, we have an interest in that, but didn't ask a question. Um, that would give them a sense of memory to um, it. That's a good suggestion, Bill. And uh, Sabrina, we can do that, I imagine. Thank you. Are there any other questions? So I think I would like to uh, have a vote from the board to uh, make this report public in the way that I have stated so that every person of interest who came before this board or who didn't but st uh, still has interest uh, would uh, be able to access this information. And so with that, I'll, uh, I'll look for a motion. Well, the public has been most patient. Um, this has taken uh, almost a year to um, bring to fruition. So I would move that we make this public and that we furnish a copy to the uh, people who are impacted by the um, airport. Motion by Arthur. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dan. Any other questions from the board? I do, yeah, I have a question. Uh, we're going to publish this. Uh, the intent that this motion passes is to publish this. Uh, but how will we specifically notify uh, the members of the public that came before us and place their names uh, before us? To be heard. I uh, just want to make certain that, that they know explicitly mm -hmm. that this information is available. Yeah, I think when we solicited the questions, uh, one or two of the people who met with us on an evening a while back uh, volunteered to poll all of the neighbors that were interested and that did have questions, and uh, that person put together all of the questions and forwarded those questions to us. So we have those names, Sabrina, correct? Yes, and we notified all of our intensive by uh, mail soliciting questions and some of the attached that the groups to keep together and submit them to the document. Right. We have that list of the second to every one. Right. Fantastic. I just, I just want us to, yeah. to uh, take the lead in this and not be passive and, and say, well, we published it. Yeah. We want to push the information forward. 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's way too long. long time for it. I think to get it, you know, delivered in hand is, is the way to go. Right, and they, they waited a long time, and not through uh, any uh, any lack of effort on, on this board's part. Uh, Lou and Bill, uh, both you folks, and you know, it's Sabrina as well in the background, and we've been trying to push this meeting along. So, uh, even though it seemed like we were spinning our wheels, uh, we were working at it, and you folks especially. Well, I think. I think what you're going to find find in this report is that um, the circumstances for each event. So it's um, there's a question in regards to uh, how low can an aircraft fly when they're going over homes or when they're on an inbound for traffic at the end of a private airfield. Um, it's a very broad question because there's um, a lot of different circumstances that have to do with that. It has to do with the plane, it has to do with the pilot, it has to do with people inside, it has to do with the weather. There's so many different circumstances and each individual incident, um, if somebody felt that they were um, violating something, should get the tail number of that aircraft and report that to the, uh, to the Mass Aeronautics or the FAA and have them investigate that. So just because someone is flying lower than what they believe they should be, they may have authority to do that under the regulations. So if you look up under the Mass General Laws and you see, you go to a judge in the courtroom sometime and you see all these law books that are in back of the judge that have to do with all the Massachusetts General Laws. Then you look at the FAA and the Mass Aeronautics, and you see all of the books and all of the chapters and all of the sections that they have that also have to do with Mass General Laws. Um, it's a lot, and it's, sometimes these investigations take longer. Um, when you see the FAA or the Mass Aeronautics involved in any type of investigation, they don't take it lightly, they take it very seriously, and. Uh, and it may take them a long time to come to a conclusion about something, but uh, they, they put every effort possibly into that investigation. So, uh, the only thing I can say to the public is that they might not be completely satisfied with the report, but it's the best that we can do, but, and it's an investigation that's done by uh, state and federal authorities, not, not local. There's a lot of rules and regulations in the FAA as of now. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, add that uh, when uh, Bill and I uh, tried to bring these, get all of this together and get answers to many questions, uh, we did find out who the responsible people were that we should talk to, and those are the people that we did meet with. Now, there are some issues that might fall under the town of Pembroke. Um, if, if signing is going to be put out uh, front of a person's uh, property that would advertise a particular event, uh, they would it'd be good to talk to the building inspector who uh, controls our sign laws. And it would be a suggestion from the board, I think, to the owner of the airfield that if they were going to have any type of a big event, which they are entitled to do, if they just let the Board of Selectmen's office know, uh, then we would at least be aware of an event. And, uh, so that would be helpful to us. So uh, we have that cooperation from the owner of the airfield, and uh, I'm sure that he'd be very willing to do that. So uh, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Can we have a, uh, to take a vote now on to accept this report and to distribute it as we have described? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I declare it unanimous. Uh, before I go on, I'd like to recognize the young gentleman at the back. Did you have any business that you wanted to bring to the board's yes, uh, attention? I yeah, I have a question. Um, Would you like to come up front, please? Absolutely.
Tell us your name and uh, board and the town administrator. Uh, I'm Bill Quigg. Uh, I'm here asking for advice. Uh, on Wednesday, August 17th, I'm going to be giving a talk in um, the Pembroke Public Library about a career in computer science and giving a free talk about like the fundamentals of computer science to the public for free. And I'm wondering if you have any advice on how to reach out and inform the public of this uh, talk I'm going to be giving. Well, I think the first thing we could do is uh, put it on the website, Sabrina. Would that be a good suggestion? Okay. It's at 7 o'clock, Wednesday, August 17th. Uh, computer science. And of course, you're getting a plug here tonight that, uh, yeah. that you'll be conducting that course. And uh, um, a lot of folks, uh, I think, have some knowledge of computers, but it never seems to be enough knowledge. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully, you'll get uh, a, a good crowd of people there. And uh, I'm sure by answering their questions, you'll be doing them a very big service. So thank you for coming tonight, and I hope you are very successful there. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Okay. You want to go back? Before you go, uh, there are there are a couple of other places you can look into. The uh, Pembroke Mariner and Express is our local newspaper. It's it's owned by the Patriot Ledger, but uh, that's that's the local version. Uh, you can contact them, find their information on the website. Uh, they might like to speak to you on it. I'll like to do a small article on it. I'm always looking for local interest stories. And also there are a couple of uh, local Facebook pages uh, that you can look into. Uh, I don't want to preference one over the other, but there are, there are a handful of them that you can, that you can look into uh, to join that for the information. Okay, thanks, good luck. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wednesday, August 17th at 7 o'clock. <laughs> good deal. Jump on that one, please. Yes. Good. That's good. Well, thanks All right. for your time. Thank you for coming in. I hope you're successful. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is uh, the special police officers uh, on the annual reappointment. Uh, this list was submitted by Police Chief Wall. And, uh, he is recommending an annual appointment of the following special police officers. Douglas Bailey, Mark Schubert, Brian Kane, Roy Simone, Alan Malekas, Frank Margaria, Michael Laurenberger, Edward Flannery, Gregory Burns, Robert Lane, James Bolter, Michael McCarthy, Justin Kirby, Willard J. Bolter III, Willard J. Bolter Jr., Robert Morgan, Joseph McCann, Arthur Schott, John Edmondson, Robert Morissette, James Madden, William Pinchy, Richard Tenor. Uh, can I have a motion, please? I would move the um, annual appointments of special police officers that submitted. Motion second, by second. Second by Dan. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 So we have four in favor and one abstain. Thank you, Bill. Uh, we have before us a, uh, a new committee formed to address the town's long-term revenue growth. Uh, this was discussed at uh, a previous meeting of the Board of Selectmen. It was uh, proposed to us by members of the Pembroke School Committee and uh, they are suggesting that the town establish a committee uh, and to take uh, the issue of raising additional revenue for the town of Pembroke and uh, coming up with a plan of action. Uh, a recommended uh, committee of seven people, Ed Fawn, town administrator, uh, Aaron Obey, superintendent of schools, Mike Tropiano, School Committee Budget, uh, Patrick Chilcott, School Committee Budget, two selectmen, and two alternates, Mike Buckley and Kathy Salmon. So uh, the list is complete except for
two selectmen. And the planning board. And the planning board. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. That, tonight, the planning board has also been invited uh, for one person to represent them, and they will be discussing that tonight at their regular meeting. Question? Yes, Dan. I don't see anyone here from the advisory committee. Is there a reason for that? Uh, that's a good question. Don't remember. Yeah, I think we had it originally, so you're, you're correct. Now, we had a couple of uh, discussions about this, and I think that might have been left off. Yeah, I think we should have done that. That's a glaring oversight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if we add an uh, uh, advisory board, uh, that brings us to eight. Uh, eight is, uh, we usually have odd number committees, which helps in a quorum. If we have seven, the quorum is four. If we have nine, the quorum is five. Well, we're probably always going to have at least Mr. Buckby and Ms. Simon at almost every meeting, one or the other or both. So that'll take care of the quorum. Part, so. Okay. so uh, as Dan pointed out, uh, we should have an advisory board person on this committee and we'll be in contact with them and ask the chairman to uh, bring it up and to put forth the name. So uh, we would have, uh, we would amend that list to add a person from the advisory board. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, I need a motion. Okay. Uh, moved by Bill, seconded by Arthur. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I declare it unanimous. <coughs> I would like to close that out tonight if I can. Um, do we have uh, any select one to be interested? I had a group and I volunteered to do so. Excellent match. I think that he volunteered for the do it. It's a perfect match. Yeah. So we'll add Matthew to that list. Do we have uh, a second selector who would like to volunteer? Yeah, I think I'm going to do it for a long time. Yeah, I, I'm teaching at Quincy College um, in September or October, but. Um, the schedule on Wednesdays, I can make it. So, Jackie and I have been a good combination. Good. Very good. Thank you both. So, we will add Arthur uh, and Matthew to that list. Good. good. So, moved by Bill. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, that's unanimous. Thank you both. Uh, the next item on the agenda, it's uh, still plenty of time before 8 o'clock. Uh, we have uh, a resignation of Catherine Thurbide on the Town Landing Committee. Do I have a motion? I would move to accept it with regret. Catherine Thurbide has been a terrific member for a number of years, and um, she certainly Motion by Op. Is there a second? Second. Second by Bill, I guess. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, 5 to 0. The next item is to consider a request for appointment on the Town Landing Committee. We have an application from Mark Gallagher um, and an email. Uh, from the chairman of the committee, uh, who was requesting that we appoint Mr. Gallagher. I would move the appointment of Mark Gallagher to the vacancy on the Town Landing Committee. He is a, um, a Bryant Hill resident. He's not honorable Sandy, but he's within a block of it and um, you know, has expressed a great deal of interest in the beaches. And um, I, I think he would bring a lot of energy to the committee. Excellent. 
excellent thing. Motion by Abba, seconded by Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher, and we look forward to your contribution. Uh, the next item of business we have is a request to approve activation of a street light on Helio Path off of Monroe Street. And there is uh, no street light there now. And there is the oh, that's right. There is an if the developer right. has been paying for it, correct? Yes, and we accept the inventory. Yes. So I, I need a motion on this item. So moved by Yaffa. Second by Bill. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Five to zero. Now we have a very interesting item. The Pembroke High School Platinum Club is requesting that they use Tubbs Metal for a junior classical league competition. Uh, this competition uh, is that the Latin club will build a trebuchet at Tubbs Metal and enter it into the Junior Classical League competition. And they want to host this competition at Tubbs Metal. They have uh, provided a picture of what they want to build. And not knowing anything about it, I used Google. Okay. And I found out that this is, uh, some of you may already know this, but for those that know. This is uh, derived from the uh, ancient sling in China in the 4th century BC. And it is made to launch projectiles against their enemies. Uh, they have various heights, and the various heights lead to the uh, how far projectiles are thrown and the accuracy at which they can be thrown. Uh, they've been built uh, for many sizes, and I found out that the largest one is 59 feet tall. It's in England, and it can throw an 80-pound missile up to 980 feet. And I was didn't know much about this, as you can tell. Um, and I was surprised that uh, this is a very popular thing uh, to be done. And so uh, a very uh, teachable project for people. Well, I say Pepe Diem and uh, <laughs> favorable action. Uh, motion by Apple. Is there a second? I have a few questions. Yes, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Jack. Uh, I was hoping before we uh, vote on this to get a better understanding of the scope of this trebuchet. And as well as a, I was hoping they had put together a public viewing day for this. And then we can inform the public about that day. Excellent idea. It'd be interesting to see it. They had several appointments scheduled with conservation in the very early stages. They didn't even want to go too much further if it wasn't going to be allowed. But they're going to be working for months with conservation on the specific location that comes that up. And they have a significant set of criteria that will give it to them in terms of security and, and construction and what they could and couldn't do. So they definitely do plan to come before the board that is summer vacation for the high school kids. Yeah. So they just wanted to find out if the board was supportive of them through the process of conservation, and we could schedule the uh, Latin Club representatives to come in before the board if you're so desired. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, does uh, anyone on the board have any objections to uh, uh, giving them a preliminary okay, knowing that they are going to be working very closely with conservation? No. But it's a great event. Every fall, there are, there are dozens of uh, of uh, these trebuchets uh, gather to, to toss pumpkins and gourds. So yeah. you keep an eye on it in the fall and you'll get to see it on the Very evening good. news, I not will. just on Google. Yeah. I don't throw many pumpkins where I live, I guess. <laughs> I haven't been too up on that stuff. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a medieval device and people yeah. get into it in varying degrees. Uh, 
from just building the mechanism to uh, getting in character. Excellent. So, um, are we in favor of uh, giving them the okay to generally move ahead with this project? I think Next item of business, uh, Jan Gallagher, Chairman of the Pembroke's Art Festival Committee, is requesting the Board of Selectmen to grant permission for the road closure of Curve Street on Saturday, August 13th, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. There will be an antique car show at the First Church. They have procured a police detail for this event at these times. So. Um, I would second that subject to the approval of the uh, police chief. Excellent. Uh, moved by Bill and seconded by Arthur with a caveat the police chief is involved. And he gives his okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I declare it unanimous. The next item before us is uh, the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of July 11, 2016. Do I have a motion? I would move the uh, minutes of July 11, 2016 as uh, presented. Thank you. Arthur, is there a second? Second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, 5 to 0. Uh, do we have any old business before the board tonight? Hearing none, I'll move along to the town administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, uh, upon a request of Selectman Tribuco, um, sometime uh, about within the last week or so, um, I was able to furnish him a copy of the uh, summary report of the uh, strategic planning retreat that was held at the uh, Federal Country Club. And as a follow-up to that, I've included the report of that um, strategic planning retreat, as well as the uh, interviews that were conducted by the intern from Suffolk University, and you have that in your packet uh, tonight for your information. So um, what the town accountant and I are doing is uh, I've sent the memorandums out to all the department heads about capital improvements and uh, uh, update of their uh, operational plan to update that five-year plan that was done uh, a few years ago um, in, in compliance with what the, uh, the selectmen told the advisory they were going to do. So you have that report. If you have any questions, obviously, uh, you can contact me. Uh, speaking of that, I would like to say, uh, also mention to the board that uh, Dan also sent me a newspaper article about uh, uh, town and their plans they have uh, for the upcoming year. I know that was the question that was asked by advisory to this board, and uh, it's a good thing to see uh, how other towns are putting themselves in, what position they're putting themselves <coughs> in, and what their plans are for the next year. Um, I think the public knows that this board has been trying to get a solar farm on the landfill and uh, that's going to be a, uh, an economic uh, plus for the town when we get that. Uh, we're still trying to move forward on that. Uh, things do look good, but uh, we haven't got anything that I can mention here tonight. There's other issues that we're also working on. So we, uh, we could come up with a 
document. I think it would be a good idea on uh, what our plans are for the future. So we'll be addressing that. Anything else, uh, Ed? No, thank you. Does anyone have anything under Ask the Selectman? I have a, um, a verbal Ask the Selectman. Neighbors had suggested, and I, I thought it was a good uh, suggestion at the, uh, the time, I still think it's a good idea, um, it's to uh, bring in seasonal speed bumps, um, you know, the, uh, the ones that they use in the condo complexes and the states and that kind of thing, where they put them in, in, in um, April and May and they take them out in October, but if they're not lifted by the you know, snow plows and that kind of thing, and to a neighbor. said, what if the town brought in these temporary speed bumps, what would you, you know, what would you think, because, you know, you're going to have to drive over the news as well as, you know, the unwelcome traffic. And they were, to an individual, um, in favor of the um, speed bump. And um, I, I'd like it sent from the Board of Selectmen uh, to Ed, if possible, to the DPW to look into um, getting it's a little late for this year, um, and the, the police are doing a good job of, of, you know, catching people when we turn in plate numbers and things like that, but um, I, I think it would be a, a good first step in uh, curbing some of this traffic, so we would, uh, you know, as a neighborhood, we would be the guinea pigs for it or whatever, and um, gladly so, uh, but I'm sure there are other uh, neighborhoods around the uh, pond in particular along Oldham Pond. Saturday night was estimated at 35 miles an hour on Cedar Terrace, which, as most of you know, is about nine feet wide. And um, you would have nowhere to go if there was another car coming in the other direction. Worse yet, if a child came out on the street or, um, you know, followed a basketball out on the street or something like that. So, um, before we have a uh, tragedy, I'd like to um, get uh, some support from the DPW and I think that they would welcome the opportunity to do something for the community. I can certainly understand the uh, safety issue there but from your description. And uh, 35 doesn't sound like an excessive amount of speed because we use the regular streets. Yeah. But a nine foot wide street, uh, that's, that's just uh, looking for something to happen. So uh, you, you, you're still doing some investigation on this. A lot of yeah, but it, it's come, you know, with support from everybody I've asked about it because it, it's it's a neighborhood nuisance. Um, it, it um, you know, it comes as a mixed blessing getting pavement done in, in certain neighborhoods and certain streets because you know, in a street that's nine or ten or twelve feet wide, you have a moon paved and it becomes a NASCAR. speed bumps, you know, as a seasonal solution. Um, I, I think it'll work, but, you know, they will experiment on three or four streets, um, you know, and get the neighborhood support to do it, at least in that neighborhood. Jim? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I would like I would like to see the DBW and the, the police department analyze it first and foremost to, to, to see if it's if it's feasible. And you know, public safety is public safety, and I understand. I understand. But one thing I, I I'd like to guard against as a selectman representing all the town is to um, is to be placating one neighborhood that the big in 35 is absolutely too fast for that, that roadway. But if it's, a, if it's a neighborhood that perceives someone that's speeding and the, the board of selectmen run to the rescue with, with temporary speed bumps for them, um, and then every other neighborhood that's a tight community will all feel the same way, at, at what point uh, does it end? And you know, I'm not taking away it from uh, the safety factor, but um, I, I have to step back. I have to step back and look at it in, in that light. Is this? Are we truly stopping uh, stopping a menace uh, for safety, or are we placating uh, a tight knit neighborhood? I don't know, but that's that's something that I need to look at and think of. That it's, and I know it's tough uh, because you're there and you're with them and on the ground. Uh, but it, it, I need to look at it a little further. I, I can't just keep running to tell everyone for everything when someone says, think of the children. So I need to look at it. It may be completely valid. And they're going 35 miles an hour. If that's valid down that street. So I, I just want to have the experts, the experts in the industry, the DPW, Police Department, take a look at it, rather than a political board, uh, along with the political board. Well, that's why I want to involve the DPW and the Police Department. Absolutely. No, it's, 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 fair, it's fair to do yeah. this, certainly. I mean, and it, it's, it's an easy and expensive solution. It's, um, you know, you know, you actually have a whole other problem with the old green kids. Potentially, ultimate and perhaps a slightly less expensive solution to the problem. We have the police department look into the idea of placing an occupied police car somewhere along the road, and make people perhaps think that there's police officers monitoring the speed limits. I, I would have to agree. I think speeding in this town, in various sections of town, it's uh, prevalent all over. And people really do have to watch the speed limits and you know, just observe it. That's all you have to do. So, you know, one of the funniest things about that is that the people on one particular street who call and complain about speeders. Well, again, I think it, it's, you know, incumbent upon us where we are made aware of it, um, you know, we need to take some type of positive action 
and we had the idea of a speech from came from a neighbor, uh, you know, somebody who's not necessarily involved in the day-to-day, you know, political uh, running of the town, that, you know, I think acting upon, you know, something from the average citizen is, you know, very worthy of our time and effort. Um, I, I would like to forward it through it to the, um, the police department and to the DPW, and I would appreciate the support of the board. Yeah. Um, I do too. So, um, yeah, I would move that Ed communicate in whatever fashion he sees um, most fit uh, to address the uh, issue. Um, he knows what it is, and he would be willing to throw it out for him. Good. Good. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Thorne will take care of that. Thank you. Uh, new business before this board. Anyone have anything? Bill. Um, over the past, um, we've, we've looked into a lot of things in the past that were on the bottom of the farm and streams. We did a lot of cleaning. Past year, we had um, a really huge amount of terror that came up uh, this year into the ponds. And unfortunately, we look now and we see this drought that's here, and there's no water. Um, we've had the gates closed um, at the um, ladder down the back of the French pond since June 1st, and um, there's no water. Tragedy to have this happen this time of year because September is the migration for the juvenile fish to go downstream. And they've been looking to, to have the water to do that. And hopefully, we have some water before September. Um, fish Mart is, is another option that we can open in the board and um, and allow the fish passage through um, the pipes that go to Super Lake that we can convert it. So we've already looked into the fact that we can do that, but that's going to make the level of the current pond go down even lower than what it is now um, by doing that. And um, it's, it's uh, something that I think that we should look into with Rockland and Abington because they just keep taking water, taking water. You can see the level um, Rockland and Abington. Nobody is looking at that. Send a letter to them and ask them, Are you diverting the water coming off the French pond? Um, you know, and using that water for some of the rock and having it. Um, I don't know if, if they can find out if there's any kind of meetings that we can go across the movie and uh, we can attend some of those meetings to find out what they do and why they're doing it and all that information that we get from Rockland. Because I think it's just critical that I think the water is going. Last year we had the same problem. The water level got down low. Um, it wasn't going out to the dam, but it was coming in from all the pond and the furnace. But it wasn't going out, so it had to be going somewhere. So it was probably going underground to the aquifer or whatever, right over to Big Sandy. And they just keep taking the water. So as they're taking the water, that whole area of the water level goes down even further. So I don't know what kind of restrictions that they have or what, you know, what their um, rights are in terms of what they're doing. So if you're taking water, is there some way that we can look at that and find out if they can have committee meetings or possibly we can go, or I'd be willing to give my time up to go to the meetings and explain to them that the current population is very important to the town right now, especially this year, that we have such a large group of fish that came up and, and migrated to spawn here. Um, the biggest thing is, and um, it just seemed a shame that we wouldn't be able to get those fish downstream back up to the river and back again because there's too much 
two water supplies in the town. They just keep taking water, taking water. So it's going to be a stop somewhere. Themselves, it's, it's, um, it's going to be another source. They should be looking into another source of somewhere else to get it more out rather than taking it all out of the But I'm sure it'll be more time to, to look into some of that. Um, I'm sure there's a way we could talk to the county department of commissioners or whatever and find out if there's any meetings they have. Or well, I know both managers there real well, so I'd be happy to. Give those guys a call. Yeah, Alan Shanta is the approachable. And uh, Rick Lafon's in Evan. Yeah. And then Dan Callahan is the, uh, the water director. And I've spoken to him a number of times uh, in the past uh, about water and what they've been taking out for, for, for other water issues. And he's, he's been responsive. He answers the phone, he answers the email. So I'll, I'll get you his, his phone number and his email address uh, so you can speak, go right to the source. I mean, he answers to commissioners, but uh, he. He's the guy that runs the day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. And we're, we go to meetings with Brockton and uh, you know, the uh, Public County Advisory Board and all the stuff that we do with the water and changing the ice on the pond. It's, it's like everybody's overlooking the water for that again. And it's going to be this uh, high coverage that we go down and take a look at. So it would be nice to know that. Some of them we save water, so, so we, we can cut the water right in, in the fall. And, uh, we save it, save it, and they take it. So it just doesn't make sense to me. But we still have that issue of uh, Brockton taking the water and then selling it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. We can kind of seem to get a handle on that. I don't know where that stands. Well, the, the latest where the Brockton water stands, uh, uh, as we know it, is uh, our state legislator and, and others, and Jim Calter is, is one of the few who has been taking the lead. Uh, the last statement that he said when the Brockton mayor, the uh, last published statement that I recall, uh, he tried to get a meeting with the Brockton mayor, and the Brockton mayor blew, blew off a meeting abruptly and did not did not show uh, so he said Tom Calter said the state legislature gave them the right to take the water out of Silver Lake the state legislature can take it away and that's a pretty good segue to ask our state legislator when he gets on the mic here it is <laughs> that that's a good <laughs> point all right Good evening, good evening. So I actually just left Tom Calder. <laughs> Thank you. Literally, uh, which, you know. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. For as long as my first uh, time before you as a selectman, congratulations again. Thank you. You guys are good to see you all. Um, so I uh, will start with what uh, Dan asked, and then I'll dive into the, the budget update, and then happy to take any questions <laughs> that you guys might have. Bless you. Um, so regarding the issue of um, water management vis-a-vis -vis Brockton, this has been, and credit to the Selectman Tribute, he's, he's been on top of this since the beginning, since I first got elected, he's been, he's been on me to, to, to be on that, and I appreciate having that kind of support at the local level, so thank you. Um, and Representative Calter, to his credit, um, next door in Halifax and also Kingston, has been really the, the, folk, the vocal leader of this, and I've been proud to stand with him and, and support his efforts. Um, We've done a few different things. Number one, we do have a, a piece of legislation that we filed together that uh, Representative called the file that I was a co-sponsor of. Um, we have been um, having some discussions with the DEP. Uh, they are in the process of going through the consent, consent decree, um, which is being negotiated with Brockton. I don't know yet what the outcome of that will be, how favorable that will be to our position or not, um, but that is in the works. We've had some conference calls, Representative so called to myself and the region, uh, the region five um, DEP uh, coordinator out of Lakeville. Um, so that's one front we're working on. We did have um, earlier um, this summer uh, a, a walking tour of the area with um, 
some of the legislators from Brockton. Um, and we had some pretty candid conversations, I would say. Um, and uh, Selectman Cooper was correct. There was a meeting that was supposed to happen with the mayor of Brockton. It didn't happen. Um, I don't want to get into the personalities of it, but we're still trying to press for that meeting, and I, you know, I'm going to try to be there as well um, to, uh, to make our case. I think, you know, I, I mean, I think I understand their position. I don't agree with it, but I think I understand their position. You know, they, they feel that, um, from their point of view, switching to desal plant is going to cost money. Why would they do that when they can take water at home? You know, cost here. Um, that doesn't make it right, in my view. And that's the, the, the key issue. I think Representative Coulter, uh his long-term goal is, you know, whether we do it with the legislature or not, is to get Brock to consider joining the NWRA, which is one potential avenue to solve their woes, and hopefully alleviate ours as well. So it hasn't been solved, Dan. Um, it's not going to be solved right away. It's a contentious issue, and there's two sides to this. Um, but I can tell you that there's some strong feelings, and you know, we're all united in terms of working together. Uh, our delegation and Senator DMC as well, as you mentioned as well, um, to try to come to some resolution. Josh? Yes, sir. I understand that the legislature gave Rockton the okay years and years ago to take water from Pepper. I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with all of a sudden they feel that they have a right to take water that they don't need and sell it to somebody else. That's what I don't understand. Right. I don't think that was the intent. No, I don't think that was anybody's in idea either. Yeah. when they gave Brock the okay. All right, hundred percent agree. And it reminded me of another point that I wanted to mention. Um, a couple areas where we have making some progress. In last year's budget, and again this year's budget, I'll mention that um, we did get funding for the Central Plymouth County Water District um, Commission. Um, which in and of itself, that is actually progress. If you think about it, going back maybe three or four years ago, that, that body, to familiarize yourself for, for those who may not be uh, as familiar with Dan, um, was created by the, the legislation which was passed, I believe, in 1966. But for a long time, it was dormant. The Central Public Water County District existed on paper, essentially. And it didn't really have active meetings. Uh, that was revived. and now has a very vibrant uh, group. There's three commissioners, one from Brockton. Two others that host their meetings. I know some of you have been there. Or, uh, I've been to some of the meetings. I know Mr. Thorne has been involved in that. So that is one thing that is, that is positive. The communication has been much more active. I, I'm on the email chains. I see the emails back and forth between the commissioners in the city of Brockton um, and the water commissioner. Um, some of them are, you know, contentious because <laughs> there are some real disagreements about the management and who has the authority to open the sluice gates and you know, getting down to that level of management. So. There was funding in the budget last year, which they ha they now have, and could put to good use. I think one of the things they're talking about doing is automating the sluice gates, which would give a little bit more power to the, the Water District Commission. Um, there's some money in the budget again this year, um, which will help another dollars. So that's at least more progress. Um, again, it's not, it's not a solution, but I, I wholeheartedly agree with, with the underlying point. Yeah. I think what I brought up to the Silver Lake, you're talking about. That's a great. Sorry, didn't you? that's a great point. You know, you mentioned it, Bill. Uh, one of the issues we've had, you know, obviously all of our South Shore towns are under water restrictions. Um, Brockton only recently went under voluntary restrictions, so they, they really have don't don't have a lot of incentive to conserve water, which is um, not what incentives should be. So that's another issue that we have with the whole water management system. Is we don't have incentives to conserve water; they really don't. Another thing that um, I think you probably Did burning water during migration periods, and I don't think that the conversion should be done during migration. Probably when they gave you that permit to do that years ago, to say you could take water from uh, from October first or whatever, um, right through to May thirtieth or whatever. Um, just 
this is a this is a good time for migration to fish. If we don't have a lot of war, they're taking water and they're not fixing their screens and things like that so that they can now fish you know, get into some of this, which has happened on a number of occasions. So if you actually see them, I would think you would. You would. You guys down there once down that. There on yeah. one day when there was hundreds of little fish that were right near the dam and that's all they had to do was open the gates and away they would go. So uh, I think things like that need to be really need to be looked into. I'm in full agreement that we divert water into Salt Lake, uh, but not during the migration period when we're not fishing on the migrant. That's, we're trying to do the best job that we can to increase the amount of fish that's coming up in the of this pond and getting back downstream. So if they're going to be diverting water during our migration, we won't have enough water to do that. That's, that's not good. If you all think it would be helpful, I think it was probably about a year ago we had uh, Representative Calder, along with I think Paul Collis from the Single Home County Water District Commission, come in to, to a meeting uh, and have a discussion either here or a, sh a smaller gathering, whatever you think would be helpful. But if, if that's something that would be helpful to the board, I'd be happy to try to work. So. Well, actually, I go to those meetings. You go to those meetings anyway, so. Stick on talking about water. It's a good segue, <laughs> actually, um, to other water issues. Uh, so uh, my purpose, my main purpose this evening was just to uh, kind of give a quick budget update. Mm -hmm. We finished mm -hmm. our, our budget cycle for the FY, uh, the FY 16, excuse me, FY 17. Um, I just want to give a brief update. Um, we have some uh, some good news for the town. Uh, and again, I wanted to send regards from Senator DiMacito. I'm sorry he couldn't be here this evening with us. He had a, a commitment, but, uh, but obviously he's been a pleasure to work with and uh, did great things for the town. It's his first turn out after. That. So, kudos to him. Um, so, um, just to, I guess before I get to the, the local stuff, I wanted to just give a, a, a broad view. Um, this year's a, a bit of a challenging budget cycle. We had some, some revenue numbers that were fluctuating quite a bit in the program news reports. Uh, and so, initially, we had a budget figure, revenue figure that we thought we were going to be able to work with, and then we find out we had to cut $750 million out of that. So, um, it, it was a fairly austere budget. I believe uh, in front of you, you can see the numbers. Um, $39.1 billion budget, which is an increase of just 1.7% over the year before. So, you know, pretty, uh, uh, pretty modest increase. But I think what, you know, you can be pleased with and be proud of is that even within that very just conservative uh, constraint, we made some key investments in areas that I think are, that we all think are important. Um, substance abuse, education being one. Um, substance abuse, uh, local aid and education uh, being a key one. Um, one of the things I've talked about in the past is chapter, 50, chapter 70, uh, for pupil minimum expenditures, which we've increased to $55 per pupil, which is a huge um, uh, win for suburban communities like ours. Um, in the past, uh, to get too in the weeds with the numbers, uh, but for instance, last year, the budget was $25 per pupil, so we've more than doubled from $25 to $55 per pupil uh, to mean for Pembroke, it's literally a little, little about $110,000 extra than we would have gotten in the past, so that's very welcome. News. It's something, frankly, we've been pushing for for a long time. Because I think, you know, whenever I go to the school committee meetings, they're they're always, you know, if it's water here, it's 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 chapter seventy over there, and um, you know, rightly so. And so this is something that we've all been trying to uh, get raised for a number of years. And so to see it increased twenty five up to fifty five is very welcome news. So um, that was great uh, news. We also saw an increase in the um, formula the formula grants for our council fund agent for our senior center. So we'll go from nine to ten dollars per senior uh, to help folks now in the Pembroke Senior Center and every other senior center across the state. Um, also, a number of areas um, in terms of overrides. I know many of you, some of you, have contacted me um, about some of these overrides. I've listed a number of ones that were of interest. Um, one of the things that is something I wanted to mention that was of interest of mine is, is Lyme disease, because you know, unfortunately here in the South Shore we have a high incidence of Lyme disease. That's something many constituents here in Pembroke and next week throughout the South Shore have reached out to me about because um, some folks were able to get the shot and they're fine, they're back on their feet. Other people have long term effects of Lyme disease. And in some cases, long term antibiotic treatment is the only thing that's really um, proving to help, help in these situations. For the longest time, people were not able to get insurance coverage for long term antibiotic care. 
Uh, and so it's something we're spending you know, thousands, really tens of thousands of dollars for them. Um, so for the first time uh, this year, uh, we've actually been through, and that's at Section 2, uh, uh, to allow people who have long-term uh, long lung disease issues to qualify for long-term uh, care uh, if their doctor's recommended, if their medical professional's recommended, so they can get insurance coverage. So that'll save folks uh, a lot of money. So that was, a, I thought, a big um, victory for something that affects us here on the South Shore. Um, more locally, um, Senator DiMacito and I working together again, um, some good news in terms of some earmarks for the town. Uh, one, some of you guys may already be uh, up to date on these, but um, um, there's $100,000 in the budget for Henry Young Park. Senator DiMacito put into the, the Senate budget, it was passed in the House. So that was, uh, it was overrode, overwritten, excuse me, that was vetoed, but then the veto was overridden, so the money is in the budget. Um, same for $50,000 that I put in for uh, public safety improvements here in the town. Again, that was a veto, but overridden, so that money is now in the budget. Um, there were some funds uh, made available for what I call Interface, Project Interface, which is a mental health referral service, which helps people who have um, mental health needs trying to connect with mental health professionals. Um, one of the aspects we see with the whole opiate issue is that for some folks, it's a mental health issue. Getting the help that they um, need can be a big part of that. So this is one way to try to connect the dots and um, get treatment to folks uh, who need it. So the project interface uh, will include a number. Then there's some also funding for um, Central Plymouth County Water District, which I mentioned already, which obviously benefits Pembroke and Hanson in our region. And then um, funds for Tripoli uh, West Nile virus, which is working on some of every year um, to try to do spray. So those are some of the highlights. Um, the um, school aid thing uh, I mentioned already. Um, I guess if you want, if there's any particular needs or questions or areas that you're interested in, I'd be happy to talk. Um, Ed Thorne and I have already kind of talked more times than I can think of the last couple weeks about various things. So he's on top of stuff. But if there's anything particular that you're interested in, I'm happy to try to address it. And everything I just mentioned um, is in the state. Well, good to see you, Representative. Yes, likewise. Um, to go back to water for a minute. Yes, okay. Um, Dan, I think, uh, quoted Representative Falter as saying, you know, we gave Rockton the right to the water, we can take it away. I mean, is, is that realistic? So, uh, the folks in the House yeah, to do that? the problem is, so Representative Falter filed a bill that I'm a co-sponsor of, and the problem is going to be just getting enough support for that because um, you know, if you look at the population, there's more people over there. And um, you know, that means they have more, more, more representation. So um, that's going to be an uphill fight, I think, to try to get that to happen. And I think... Um, is, excuse me, Josh, yeah. is that to repeal the 1964 yes. legislation? Yes. Right. And I think, you know, I, hope, I'm, I am hopeful that we can... You know, there's got to be a compromise. Well, Brockton has a desol plan. You know, the NWRA would be an option. We're not saying you can't use the water at all. We're just saying we want you to use it responsibly. Well, the D cell plan could spend between two and six million dollars, depending on who you believe, um, you know, not to use the facility. Right. It's like one of those not raising pigs things you see in the federal budget, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Mr. Chairman, if I'm that 1964 legislation allows Brockton to sell water to Whitman, correct? I don't. Double check there. Okay. It's because there's diary. Yeah. So that affects the town of Whitman as well. So. No, I'm just no. saying that uh, you know, that does, that, that say it that does include Whitman. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's the whole thing about all this is um, when they made this back in 1964, um, there, was a, there was a lot of water. There was, sure. You know, you know, there was water everywhere. And what was the people, population well, of the town? The population. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's very different just, time. Just to do a quick one thing, the, the legislation was passed in 1899. The 65 law was passed because it was a severe drought. So they had to amend the 1899 law. I'll yeah. pull that over to you. I have a copy of the original. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, and even, even as far as the fisheries and things like that go, it's, um, it's something that it, it was so abundant way back then. They didn't think about it. Um, just, you know, 
was happening the other day. I think all the needs to be looked at. Division three fisheries is what our board with us to look at trying to deal with the problem. Over at Chase, we've got a bunch of different uh, projects. something that really needs to study. One of the things that we asked you at one of the meetings we asked um, the, uh, the Central Central County Water District Commission is, is that we need to have an engagement on the county pond. We, we need to have a well. And we don't know that yet. Brockton knows that because they have a little mark inside their building to say when the water gets up to here, um, we take it. We can take it down to this point. We don't know what that is. We, we have no way of, of uh, knowing how much water they're taking, when they're taking it. Uh, although we'll give you statistics if you ask for them, but we don't know whether that is correct from when that date was made, who made it, who gave it, and how. Uh, where it was today's, uh, we asked if they can include that in the grant, that the money that they got from the grant. Last year? Yeah, come in and say that this, this is what the pond yeah. level should be at all times, and uh, it shouldn't go below a certain level. It should stay at this level. So if we can find all of that out and keep it there, then that should affect Blackton taking water, and it should affect Abington and Blackton taking water, because we're going to get more from the Blackton side. But they just keep taking it, and that's a lot of over there, that's a lot of what all this older and furnace now. So I mean, between old and there's a little trickle up going through the brook. And it's just there's not enough water there for the water to get to the fish and gas side of the river. It's not much to be able to go up and get it. Between that and that, that uh, especially on a bumpy year, you know, we've had so much uh, fish that have come up this year. Originally, three or four years ago, it was 20 to 30,000 fish. Last year, it was 120 something thousand. Um, this year with 238,000 that they took from the counter out. And after the counter was taken out, there was thousands more that came out. So we had a really good year, and then to lose all of that and not be able to get it downstream would be a tragedy. So that's what we're thinking. We also brought to their attention that we're thinking of um, and trying to plan for furnace ponds to be dredged. Right. We, and we had a discussion about that the other day. So we need even more water in order to do that. So it's, it's uh, something I don't think is going to be returning back into the pond as quickly as some people might think. So we can test it. All that water has to come out of all that sludge and stuff that we need to get mm -hmm. out of it. So it's just, you know, like we have in the next two or three years, we'll get all the permits that we need and then start that project. We had a, uh, maybe I don't know if you had already updated you guys. We had a meeting last week with um, uh, representative from the Senate Board's office in uh, our region, um, the town region level, but that's the also the regional meeting, and it's going to talk about you know, some of the bigger picture priorities for the local things and everything else. And that uh, that was obviously the local one that identified that right away. And you know, I think the Senate, uh, Senate staff had some ideas about potentially the places where we could. There is some funding in a bond bill which passed two years ago. And the, uh, the bond bill says it's going to be authorized by the government for $3 million in the bond. So, all right, I get the message water. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you'd like, uh, I'd be happy that we could try to schedule a follow up or, you know, if one of the respective local meeting offices, if they're doing a subgroup to talk about that, uh, whatever your coolest preference is. Literally just rep left Representative Calder to rush over here, so I, I gotta be happy to. I'm sure he'd be happy to. Um, he represents his own community, but I'm sure he'd be happy to. He's very passionate about this, and uh, I'm sure he'd be happy to come up and chat with us as well. This might also be a, might also be a good thing to do with the board here to put on the town website and uh, you know, let them know that uh, you know, people take a look and see if all these things that they're involved in and they're doing well. Sure.
I have a question to ask. Okay, about water? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> As you know, we, we have an approval to construct a sidewalk at Cobblewalk Street, Four Winds Drive, and here in the The issue we have with moving forward with this approved project is the length of time that we can pay for this. Oh, okay. My understanding it's a five year period now. And it's a special act, I understand. Right. Can, you, can you explain that to me? What the special act? What is this? Okay, so it's a special act of the legislature. So it's, a, it's a basically a home rule petition that I generate from the town that I filed at the State House on your behalf. Senator Bucito and I uh, to work privately. Um, that one in particular, because Ed, you know, he's always on the ball. He just asked me about this the other day. That's why I know. Um, it's It passed uh, the first step, it's in House third reading. Which is um, where we all go on. Basically, the bill is passed uh, on the floor, goes to a committee. Uh, in this case, it went to the municipalities committee, had a hearing. Um, it was reported favorably from the hearing, from the committee, giving basically giving the thumbs up. And then it goes to House third reading, which is um, every bill goes to House third reading. It's like a traffic convention where they review all the bills, make sure that they um, literally like no typos. And, you know, the right master of the law is referred to, and there's not a conflict with another state law, all that kind of stuff. And that can, can, be, a, um, can be somewhat lengthy, but uh, I think this bill's been moving along, so I don't anticipate. So, so what, that's, what is the process? So it's a, it's a House third reading. Going through that. After then the it will reading. go to the Senate, and the process will repeat. And um, it doesn't have to go through a hearing. It's already had one of the joint committees, so they have one hearing for both branches. Um, it goes to the House. Goes to the Senate, goes to the government. We've already uh, we did a home rule bill in Ducks, excuse me, in Pembroke already uh, last um, last year. Um, so it's, it's not a it's not uncommon. I have a couple home rule bills in Duxbury, one in Hanson, and one in Pembroke. So. No, just to in case folks get confused, uh, we did formally end our sessions July thirty first. We have to see the news. Uh, that's ending formal sessions. We still have informal sessions throughout the year, uh, at which point um, bills of a non controversial nature, the home rule bill that I believe is that way, uh, the vast majority of times, um, can still pass during those informal sessions. So there's information for that. Thank you. Yeah. Josh, has there been any talk or movement <coughs> on reviewing, analyzing, and revising uh, the Chapter 70 formula? Sure. Uh, yes, a lot. <laughs> um, so two years ago in the budget, we uh, put language in to have a commission do a reanalysis of Chapter 70 formula. It hadn't been done in, I believe, seven or eight years, so it's it time to do it again. Uh, they did that. Um, I know, I believe, former Superintendent Hackett offered some testimony to that commission, I think um, I during my talks with the school unit, we talked about it. You know, there's a dialogue there. Um, they made so they made their report. They made some recommendations. Obviously, a big part of it is not going to be surprised. Just funding, um, the size of the pie is you know the main issue because we we'll, we can fight about how it gets divvied up, but unless the pie gets bigger, it's going to be you know this time versus that time kind of debate. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion. I think um, it's it's not resolved. Uh, this year, we saw actually a really welcome step because in the past, my frustration, probably your frustration, is that you know when you see these increases in local aid, it trickled down to, to our towns. You know, it's fairly modest. We saw very small increases in local aid, excuse me, in, um, in Chapter 70, you know, in the past few years um, because of the way the formula is. And Pembroke's student population has actually been you know, flat or even declining in some years. And this is the same, every three, all three of my towns are in the same boat <coughs> um, same issues with, with Chapter 7 formula. And so how do you resolve that? Well, short of just throwing open the whole formula and starting from scratch, which would be its own you know, uh, challenge, um, the, the minimum per pupil expenditure is the key. Because that is a sort of a catch-all that says, okay, if you didn't get an increase in the Chapter 70 formula because of the way it works, well, we're going to make sure that, that no community gets you know, nothing extra and give them a minimum per pupil increase. So in other words, if you got nothing by because of the formula because your, your student population went down, we still don't think you should get 
you know, flat them out because everyone's cost go up every year, obviously. So they say, okay, we're going to take the number of pupils and multiply times this, this number, and that's what you're going to get as a minimum guarantee. Okay. In the past, this is last year, that minimum guarantee was twenty-five dollars per pupil. So twenty-five literally times the number of pupils in the summer school system is what we got extra. Okay, on top of our, our chapter seventy. Um, that number it actually in the governor's budget was cut to, to twenty uh, at the start of the year, back in January. So that was a concern because obviously we were already at the number that we thought was too low, and it was going even lower. So when we, you know, we effectively made an effort to try. Up, um, we had a great coalition of 70 or 80 lawmakers that signed a letter that I wrote actually um, asking for an increase in that number to 50. And um, so imagine my surprise when we got 55. So um, I thought 50 would be pushing it, but hey, it sometimes pays to, to ask for more than you can get. So that was more than doubling it. Um, so that is a way to help the school districts like Pembroke, like Whitman Hanson, um, and suburban towns that. that they don't get the big share of increases in Chapter 70 because of the way the formula is. And obviously we don't, you know, we can have our whole debates and we've had, had, some, we had a really fun discussion last term at Mass Center of UBC at Oak School Committee about this. Um, you know, there's some communities, you know, that, say Lawrence, not to pick on Lawrence, gets about 90% of its budget from the state. Uh, on the other side of the coin, a town like Duxbury gets about 12%. Uh, Pembroke's actually uh, around, I think it's around 40, 41%. Um, so, you know, we're not doing too bad by that formula. Um, obviously, anytime you get into weighing need, it gets very difficult discussion because you have people from the community in Brockton or, or Lawrence that say, well, we have these tremendous problems that you guys don't have. And that's true, and that is true. Um, we also have needs as well, though, and obviously we have our own challenges. And, and so it, it is a balancing act, and that's where it gets difficult, and that's why we have a, you know, a legislature try to weigh those things out. Um, the formula has been tweaked you know, probably a couple times over the last decade um, to try to be fair and recognize those issues. Um, this year, the $55 was probably the biggest push in the right direction I've seen since I've been there, for sure, and probably going back a few years before that as well. Um, the good news, and I, and I want to, I'm on TV, so I should be careful what I say. I don't want to promise this, but typically when, when they increase something like that, they don't go back the other way unless there's a real fiscal catastrophe. So I'm very hopeful. Again, I don't, I don't want to promise this because I can't promise it, but the next year we'll start from that $55 baseline again um, and not go back down. Um, but again, I don't promise it. Hard deal, but um, I'm hopeful about that. So um, that's a short-term way to kind of get more money to our kind of community stand. Um, the longer-term issues are much thornier because, again, you're talking about if the pie doesn't change, and, and now we're not to divert, but we're talking about uh, a ballot question of charter schools that could potentially add more charter schools, and I don't want to weigh the merits of charter schools, but you know, that if there's more charter schools, there's more schools, so that means the pie is the same size, effectively, and that money's getting divvied up differently. So that becomes even more of a challenge. So the real solution is to make the pie bigger, and then everyone will benefit. And that gets new revenues and even more thorny issues. But, so that's a long answer to a, a great question. Um, the Japanese discussion is probably one of the big things that gets talked about every year. Um, and I think this year we could make it pretty significant. Um, Move forward. You, it, you, you explained it well, but I, just so you yeah. and everyone else knows why I asked, it's just to, just as you mentioned, <clears throat> the suburban towns and communities like Pembroke seem to uh, they, you can perceive it as being slighted uh, mm -hmm. in our percentage of Chapter Seventy formula compared to uh, the inner cities that that, that they want to share. So, um, and the inner cities do have their issues, um, and we have to be careful. Yeah. We have to be careful. The double you know might be better than the double you don't know because if they do redistribute it, and then then the wealthy towns are going to go up, and we may stay level or even go right. down. That's what I always say. You know, you know, people say we want to reopen the conversation and start over, and I, and I worry that that could go in our, the other direction because there's, you know, um, exactly what you say. And you know, Pembroke actually, you know, as a percentage of our net school spending, we actually get more of our budget from the state than uh, almost any surrounding town. So, uh, except for Whitman Hanson. So, you know, from that point of view, we're doing better than other suburban towns. I'm not trying to, to you know, sugarcoat it and say, we, you know, we don't clearly don't have enough money. But, um, but it is a dis discussion, in a, and, and I've talked, I've had this discussion with legislators from urban areas, and they say, well, you know, yeah, we'd like our money, but do you want our problems? And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a tough, tough issue. Uh, but, um, I think certainly we made some good progress this year. If 
there's one thing that came out of the whole session so far that I'm really the most proud of. It would be that. Uh, today we did the energy bill. So. I'm here as long as you will have me. I got nowhere else to go. Yeah, you were. Uh, I made the mistake of trying to schedule two meetings in one night, and I had to leave Duxbury early. But so you got me for the rest of the night. Duxbury had their executive session first. And <laughs> well, we, we had a discussion about medical. I'm uh, not not medical. Excuse me, uh, legalization of marijuana. And so that took a lot longer. Well, that actually takes some time in here as well. <laughs> but um, chapter um, forty B. Anything uh, changed legislatively? Nothing's changed this session. Um, there's been. I have a bill, there's, there's some legislation out there. I think that's another one of those where it's frankly playing defense is sometimes the best for the best work we're doing. Um, there, there is a broader omnibus bill, a planning bill that would change um, some of the land use components that we now talk about, like ANRs, and I some former planning board members on there, not I'm a former planning board member, um, subdivision control, things like that. And there really hasn't been, there's a, there's a sort of, I would say, an increasing level of support for that, but there really hasn't been um, a consensus about what the best way to handle that is to balance off, you know, the rights of people to develop their property with you know, adequate zoning and also local control. So that didn't happen this year. I don't know that it's going to happen anytime soon. And 40B is sort of part of that. Um, I think there's a lot of support for 40B. I, you know, I've seen the, the downside of that, um, but I've also seen the upside of it. So. Um, you know, I suspect you're not going to see a lot of movement either way on, on the 40 issue other than maybe just people's around the corner. If there's particular things that are working or not working with it, you know, let me know and I can try to address it. Um, I filed a bill about 40B cost certification just because it was an issue that came up over in Duxbury, a 40B developer tried to... Um, Snow movements. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but again, you know, we've seen number, you know, kudos to Pembroke, it's one of the few I believe you're still over the threshold, right? The 10% threshold. We're just right. under. We're just under. Oh, okay. Right well, kudos on. to you guys because that's rare class indeed. There's not many suburban towns at all um, that have met that. Well, it's, it, I am. I have very strong opinions about Chapter 40B, but it's it's tough for anyone in the legislature to to go after it wholeheartedly when the people of Massachusetts voted. Yeah. To keep it <laughs> right, it was, yeah. I, I actually signed the petition. Was it four years ago or eight years ago to, to, to repeal it? Because I was on the planning board then, and I thought it was terrible. And, you know, I have to say, I've seen not seen a light, but I, I, you know, I have a more moderated position about it because I have seen the benefits of it as well. Um, but um, but people wanted to keep it. Yeah, statewide statewide right. ballot vote uh, overwhelmingly decided right. to keep it. Right. And, you know, hey, you guys have done a great job. Every town had the responsibility to come back there, we wouldn't need 40 minutes. What else you got for me? I'll be out here all night. My, my ax. Uh... <laughs> well, I would like to tell you from, from my viewpoint. Yes, sir. Is from the original budget that we were looking at, the governor's budget, and the revised one with the overrides in it. I think uh, you've done a great job. Yeah, you know, and again, it's, uh, I want to give credit to Senator DiMasudo and um, you know, talk DNR and stuff like that, the governor. But it really, it, it is a team up there, and it's very nice the collegiality that we have, not just between Senator DiMasudo and I, but frankly, the legislature as a whole. Um, I was just at the bill signing today for, for the energy bill, Governor Baker. And, you know, we really do work together. We have our differences of communication, but I think we do work together very well, and it, it's a nice change of pace to what you see in Washington D.C. Sometimes where people can actually disagree and get things done. Yeah. Um, last question for me. Yeah. Uh, Josh, you and Senator Dean Taylor as well been working hard to advocate for uh, for the town of Pembroke and the other towns in the district. For the next session coming up, what what do you want to work for? What is what is your your your, your personal want that you you would chase in the legislature? Well, I. I, I um, I appreciate the question. I, you know, I have to run for election, and so I'm not going to presume anything. Um, I have to every two years, you know, submit myself to the voters, and I'm going to do that again. I love the job that I'm doing now. Um, mm -hmm. I still think it's, you know, still get, I think it's the coolest job in the world, and I love, love doing it. So I hope to continue doing it. I'll be running for election this fall. Um, I would just say I'm going to kind of, uh, you know, what I've been working on now, I'm going to try to continue to work on, build on. Uh, 
um, some bills that I was able to, to get through this year, some that I wasn't. Uh, there's always, the, thing, the great thing about this job is always something coming around the pike that you just you don't know you can get to work on. This year, it happened to be the energy bill, um, which had some just stuff which I'm working through with my meter and solar stuff. Um, so I don't want to, I'm hedging, I guess, Dan, because I, I don't, I feel uh, like I want to knock on wood and come back. In November, I'll come, I'll come in there. Happening, and, and I'll, I'll, I want to hear from you guys. I mean, really, I, I feel like what drives me is what you guys feed to me. Um, and um, you know, please don't be shy. I know you guys aren't shy. <laughs> Matt, you're not shy. He's a new person, but uh, so I know you know you're wearing the state house, and uh, oh, yeah. so you're welcome to have a new perspective. Josh, is there any discussion anywhere about changing the term of your office? From two years to four or six. Uh, that's not going to happen. I just can't understand the rationale for that because of what it takes to run, the time, the effort away from doing what we may wish you were doing. Yeah, you know, I, honestly, I appreciate that. Um, I, I wouldn't. I would not vote to change it. I, I think it's important to have. You know the accountability and having to run for election, and you know this is not my second time running for election. Um, it's it's much more comfortable now. I, I find the best way that I can show people that I'm doing a good job, you know, run for elections, just to do my job that I have now, and that's the best way to campaign is just to do your job. You know, for the so um, I don't find it. I still enjoy it. Um, and, uh, well, I'm glad I appreciate that, that, but I think I think well, I think keeping it at two is probably a good thing. Keeps us. Maybe those senators, maybe they need four-year terms because they have two-year terms too. Yeah. I'm glad to hear you say that, even though I don't see the merit in it, but I'm glad that you see there are. You know, might be ideal would be three-year terms like you guys have. Like, you know, it's a little bit more, but not too much. But, but nice. Well, if there's no more questions, I uh, thank you very much for coming in and. Uh, Again, uh, my, for my opinion, individual opinion, I want to thank you for what you've done for Pembroke. Uh, the, uh, the improvements that you got for us after the original budget, uh, we really need. And uh, we're all very happy with what we got. Thank you. Thank you. We just have one thing before we thank you very much. Absolutely. Actually, we're, uh, we're voting on Long-term revenue growth subcommittee where we get together and we actually uh, appointed a couple of selectmen tonight to review on that committee and come up with some ideas on how people could raise money to add to help with tax revenue and stuff. So if there's any thoughts that you may have in the legislature that would help out that committee, that would be great to get involved because they're just starting that. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things I, I didn't bring the, the, the notes, are, um, but actually tomorrow, um, the governor is signing the municipal modernization bill, which is a collection of ideas that came from selectmen, boards of selectmen, and councilors all over the state. And the governor filed it, and we went, you know, um, we did some probably minor changes, but it, it, it passed. And it's going to be signed law tomorrow, actually, and they'll sign it. Um, and that, I'm sure, has some things in there that you might be uh, good to come, have a conversation about. Um, I'll make sure you guys have it. It's like 40 something. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to get it. <laughs> you start quizzing me on it, I may not pass that quiz. But uh, it's got a lot of good things in it, I think, that you know, some of which won't apply, but some of them will. Some of you know, you guys uh, are, are in the process of doing a community compact or thinking about that? Yeah, thinking about it. Yeah. So I'd encourage you to do that as well. Yeah, I need to talk to DPW again about it because they're not really keen on the uh, uh, complete streets program. Okay. So well, it doesn't have to be that. It can be right. I understand. Totally different. Right. Hey, Josh. Thank All right. you very much. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, in. ladies. Thank you. Thank you for coming Pleasure. in. Appreciate it. Good evening. All right. Thank you. Good night, Josh. Uh, to get back to our, our agenda with uh, upcoming issues, 
Uh, August 15th, the special town meeting warrant opens. August 22nd, we the reconsideration of the door-to-door -door permit request, Steve Dement, Trinity Solo. Yeah, August 26th, the special town meeting warrant closes. Uh, we have a need for executive session, Mr. Paul. Yes, sir. Five minutes. Can I have a motion, please? Uh, I will move that we enter executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining on litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares regarding all the town unions. The chair so declares. I'll have a uh, voice vote, Dan? Yes. Matthew? Yes. Bill? Arthur? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen will be August 22nd. Uh, at the conclusion of executive session, I don't see a need to return to public session. So uh, we have a motion to adjourn by Arthur. No, we have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Executive session. Executive session. And uh, we have a second, and we got the voice vote. We're all set. So we're all set. Five to zero. Thank you. So the next meeting of the selectmen will be August 22nd, and we'll see you then. Thank you.